Ms. Indo, thank you so very much for um, your talk on the culture of autism. Um, the second part of the panel presentation will consist of questions and answers. And um, I will pose a question, and the panelists um, will be provided the opportunity to answer the question or to pass. So we'll start with question number one. Okay. If there is a culture of autism, are there subcultures within the culture, such as between men and women on the spectrum, and among individuals with classic autism, those with high-functioning autism, and those with Asperger syndrome? Lars? Uh, yes, I do think that the uh, number of potential uh, subcultures, one of the things we have to realize, of course, is that uh, many individuals in the spectrum don't come into contact with others uh, who've been diagnosed as such, uh, and therefore sometimes it's difficult to uh, create that uh, shared bond um, that, that we have. Um, we know that there are huge differences among individuals, uh, that we have different skills, different abilities, and um, different challenges, different worldviews. Um, and uh, I mentioned earlier the idea of models of people on the spectrum. I found myself, for example, to be quite similar to the Holiday Willie on, on a certain number of, of dimensions. Uh, so I think many times these subcultures are difficult to identify. If you look at the diagnostic categories such as uh, autism, Asperger's, PDD, NOS, for example, those are not going to differentiate very well because there are huge variations uh, between people in those. Which uh, brings me to an important point. Uh, you, again, you have to be very careful when you uh, receive advice from many well-intentioned people. You can see the heart-shaped forms here. But these are cookie cutters, nevertheless. They don't work well with people on uh, the autism spectrum because we're so different. You need to take different approaches. So this, I'm going to throw this piece of toxic waste away so that uh, <laughs> we, to emphasize the point that, uh, the, that it's very difficult to typecast people on the spectrum. Um, on the question number one about the cultures within the culture, to some degrees I feel there is some separation within the culture, but not a drastic change because I still feel that even those that are very high on the end of the spectrum can still be very open and supportive to those on the lower end who might not be exactly in the same place on their journey, but they're still accepted as part of the culture. For my answer, I wrote a poem. Here's the hidden culture. Here, here's the hidden curriculum, autism style from my vantage point. When I don't copy, I look like my Audi self. I'm tolerated in some circles, but oftentimes treated like a lovable pet, rarely a part of the real of what's going on. When I do copy, I look like my Aspie self and can be accepted as one. When I am my copy Aspie self, I am allowed a part in the real of the world in some circles. I'm less likely to be marginalized, but instead tolerated until it's time to go home. I can travel in both worlds of autism at this point in my life experience. As an Audi, as an Aspie, each a unique experience with vastly different degrees of separation from the mainstream of society and from each other. Because within the population of autistics, we have our own system of separation. The system well known by the brown-eyed Audis, but maybe not so well known by the Aspie-eyed Blue. The blue-eyed Aspie autistics are the fairer of the race, while the brown-eyed Audi autistics are lower in class, more unacceptable than the eyes of Blue. Brown eyes struggle differently. Their struggles easier to see. Sensory assaults routinely experienced. Most don't talk like the world folk do. 
Even among the brown eyes, we sort ourselves out in a hierarchy fashion, with the FC users, the very darkest of brown. Unwittingly true, if you can't be a blue, it's preferable to not be the darkest of brown. An FC user furthest away from the aspie-eyed blue. And as an aspie-eyed blue, I think it grossly unfair all the resources go to the eyes of brown. Just because I look more like the world folk do, I'm expected to manage all on my own. No obvious Audi needs seen. Yet I'm painfully aware a world folk I'm not. I look, I look like I am. No wonder I'm lonely, an alien of sorts, often feeling erased, having no worldly place to call my home. Us blue eyes, we copy the world folk around us, a ticket to ride in the mainstream of society, oftentimes negating a part of our real in order to play, to swim with them in their world folk swimming pool. All of us, Audis and Aspies, brown-eyed and blue, have a price to pay, differing costs for differing folks. In our world called autism, we each pay to purchase a ticket to ride in the land called society, whether brown-eyed or blue.